Hey YouTube, I uh, just thought I'd do a quick video um, talking about this knife. Uh, I've had it for about a year now. It's Microtech DOC. You heard Jim Skelton's FU clip. Uh, I have had the opportunity to uh, handle one of the old original clips. He was right. It was pretty horrible. Uh, but all in all, I wanted to agree. I mean, you can see I this is my daily carry. Uh, I've got more expensive knives in my collection. I got much more expensive knives in my collection, but there's something about the feel of this knife and the ease of resharpening and just the way it feels and carries that you don't see a lot of videos out there uh, on YouTube talking about, you know, long term use, having carried this knife for a while. Um, I know you all have seen Smoke Eater uh, 908 talking about LMAX steel and how it doesn't hold an edge and. Uh, I'm going to have to say that he might be right. It might not hold an edge maybe as far as like your S30V or, or your M390, which I've got several knives in M390, and they, they hold a, a brilliant edge forever. But <laughs> the flip side of M390 is you got to put it in some work to get it that sharp. I don't care if you got an edge pro. I don't care if you're doing it freehand. I don't care if you're using diamond stones. You're putting in you're putting in work to get it to where you can shave with it and and I do I keep my knives all to the point uh, I, I have a sharpening service so basically my everyday carry is my business card for that and if somebody asks me how sharp I can get a knife uh, I'll shave with it and with M390 you can get it there and it stays there for a while but boy you got to be ready to put in some work and what I think people forget is that L Max in a knife, while it might not hold an edge as good as some of the other steels, lends itself to being maintenanced really easy with ease of resharpening and, and ease that someone doesn't have to put in a lot of work. Uh, even simply cutting cardboard with this all afternoon, breaking boxes and stuff down just to be able to strop it on a, on a piece of phone book paper and, and have it turn around and, you know, be right back up. Now it's not one to cut. But, you know, it, hair popping, tree topping sharp, you know, hair whittling sharp, it's ease of use. And uh, the steel, that may not be perfect, but it's a pretty good knife steel in the fact that it'll take a strop and come back up to a really, really sharp edge. And when you're dealing with a work knife, that's kind of what you want. It might not hold an edge forever. No, it won't. It's, it's it's not meant for that. It's a work steel. And Anthony Marfione said it best in a video when he was talking about repairing a tip. It takes a wicked, wicked sharp edge so quick. So, you know, it's kind of a trade-off. Do you want a knife that holds the edge forever but takes you weeks and weeks and weeks to get it sharp? I don't. <laughs> I hate when customers send me an M390 steel. So... That's kind of my LMAX rant, and I like Robbie's videos that he posts, uh, Smoke Eater's videos. He, he does a lot of really good videos. I wish he posted more. He hasn't posted any for a while. But as far as from a perspective of somebody that sharpens a lot of knives, it's M390 and S90V. S30V, I mean, I'm sorry. They're, they're so hard on stones and so hard to sharpen. And I mean, once they get sharp, they oh, God, it's awesome. But for fuck's sake, it takes a while. Um, so back to the original purpose of this video is the knife. Now I got this knife. Uh, I saw it in stock. I felt it. I, I picked one up at a gun show one time, and I, I loved the ergonomics of the knife. Uh, now it had had a modified pocket clip. The guy was second it, second selling it second hand. So I got this. This one's from the 2015 run, February 2015. So I've been carrying it. A little over a year now, and like I said, I've got a lot of really nice, expensive knives. I got twelve, thirteen hundred dollars custom knives, and somehow this is the one that always finds its way into my pocket. It, it comes to work with me, and like I said, I've carried it enough. There's not any, any grip tape left in it, and it's, I mean, it's it's worn. It's got wear marks on the blade from carrying and resharpening, and there's just something to be said about a knife who, when you put it in your hand, it's just feels like it was meant to be there and i i'll admit i got big hands and this is a big knife even the strider 
that has pretty much the same design does not feel the way that this knife feels. And it has never failed to perform the way I want it to. I mean, it if I want to cut cardboard, if I want to cut line, if I want it just depends on the edge I put on it, you know, if I know I'm going to be doing a lot of demanding work, I'll I'll go back and I'll I'll put a toothier edge on it, you know. If if I know that I'm just going to be carrying it and like I said it's when I go places and people ask about sharpened knives, it is it's my business card and I will pull my knife out of my pocket and and show them a clean spot where, you know, where I basically can shave. I, I went to the Art of Sharp uh, Shaving and dropped off my card there. Actually, I just showed them my card. And, because out here in San Diego, there's not a lot of people that, that that do a lot of nice sharpening. And we've got a couple guys out here that are destroying people straight razors. And I can sharpen anything. If you want it sharp, you can pretty much rely on the fact I'll sharpen it. I do a lot of the military guys out here's knives because I, I do work... Uh, I do work for the for the for the government still, so I see a lot of military. But but back to the knife. Sorry, I went on a little tangent. Anthony and and Mick got it right when they came up with this collaboration. And so you see a lot of people knocking the pocket clip and and you know saying it's not the smoothest flipper, which it's not. I mean, you can get it that way once it breaks in. This one's broke in, and I mean it. It's smooth. And there's there's very little. There's only one thing I would say, and I took a picture of it and posted it on Instagram. Yes, I take my knives apart. And yes, I have the tools to do it. And I know it voids the warranty, but uh, that forward choil, there's a gritty spot, and it's where the detent drops over where the corner rounder has uh, smoothed that forward finger choil. But, hey, still, awesome knife. Awesome, awesome knife. So I just wanted to put it out there because there's people that do reviews, but, you know, I hired use my knives. I was in the military from the time I was 17 until I got retired, and uh, I still work for the Department of Defense and, and for the government. And my knives see a lot of hard use, and I no blade play, still early lockup. You can't even see on the blade tang, on the lockup, uh, I'm sorry, on the lockup cutter. You can see it right there. I mean, there's very little very little wear the 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 steel inserts still in good shape pivots great the anodizing has lasted as hard as i use it i mean it's got a couple spots but i mean it's in and out of my pocket all day every day uh cutting all kinds of crap god only knows when we cut with it um at home at work when i go out camping or hunting this this is this is my go-to this is this is pretty much has run all of my other pocket knives out with the exception of a little knife my father gave me when i was my daughter's age, I was about eight years old. It, it has run all of my other high-end EDCs into a drawer or into a safe. Uh, I'm thinking about selling them. I never carry them because I, this fits the bill for everything I need. I, I've taken martial arts for years. It's, it's almost like it was built for self-defense, but blade shape, you've got the deep, the, the deep flat here and then the forward flat where it's a little bit wider. You've got a strong tip nice thin edge back behind not much behind this edge it's it just it does daily demanding tasks it does tasks around the house and at work so i just i just want to get out there so that there was a video from a hard use perspective of of microtech's design and, and a lot of people don't like microtech uh, they talk about microtech's quality so back to this knife not the only microtech i own I've owned several of the Ultratex. I've owned a couple of SOCOMs. All of them amazing knives. They didn't always fit the bill for what I wanted. And the Ultratech, I kept one of the three that I've owned just for the cool factor. Like nothing fancy like to say. Second kind of cool. It's cool. Sometimes it's fun just to sit on the couch and watch TV and flick it open and close and sit there and, you know. Uh, my daughter loves it. My daughter and I share an interest in knives. She's eight years old. She shares an interest in knives and sprint cars. So... It's something that we can keep in common, so that one didn't go. It's probably going to be hers. But, you know, I've owned several Microtechs. You can't complain about the quality, quality, but it's the little things in this knife, particularly, that, that kind of speak to certain people. And it could be because I'm a military. It's more of a tactical-style knife. But you got the ramp back here to grab. You've got that forward choil when you get a hold of it. It's got a sharpening choil, which, Spyderco, please... 
please pay attention. This is a necessity to sharpen a knife. I have customers that send me Spydercos and I ask their permission to do it for free. I will put a resharpening notch that's basically a mirror image of that sharpening choil. Let me get it up here where you can see it. Only smaller. Because if you got an Edge Pro or if you're using flat stones like I do a lot of time, it starts to do a lot of damage to this stone and they're not cheap. If any of you guys do a lot of sharpening and, and have a lot of sharpening kits and things like that, the stones aren't cheap. Edge Pro stones can, for the Chosera stones, can be 60 bucks for a 5,000 grit. The further you go up in the grit, the more expensive they are. And if you're tearing them apart. So a lot of times I just ask permission from a customer. Can I, can I just please take a half an hour with a diamond file and, and a couple of fine, fine round stones and, and put a, a sharpening choil on this? It's going to make your life easier. It's definitely going to fucking save me money. So, uh... I mean, pretty much everything about it was thought out. With the exception, Jim, Skeleton, you are correct. The original pocket clip was horrific. But, this one's not too bad. I say I got big hands, it, it fits pretty comfortable. And, and you did see, like I said, it's not the smoothest flipper. You can make it, once you get it broke in, though. It's very rare that you're going to not have it flip. They say the thumb stud, the detent's too tight on it. Nah, my detent was not as tight as the one that I've seen in videos. I can use it as a thumb stud. Detent might be a little weak, actually. I've ha I actually have, and I think it's because I carry it a lot. I've actually had it. There it goes. Had it. I hit the table with it. I hope I didn't hit it with the back. I, I, I've had it pop open, you know, but it takes a good bit. That, that was a good bit of force there to try and get that to pop open. So, I mean, I'm going to take it apart again and look at it. I've only ever had it apart a couple times because, once again, pretty sure it was thought out. That's a pretty good size gap in there in that bearing race where your blade makes contact. I don't get grit and stuff in there that I need to take out. So, very... I've had it apart twice. Before I took it apart the first time, I did have to send it in because there was, a, uh, there was an issue with one of the bearings. Um, they replaced it. Microtech was awesome. Asked them not to sharpen it because I'd already sharpened it, but they did it anyway. But uh, they replaced the bearings. So that speaks to something else. I know that there's been a lot of horror stories about Microtech's customer service. I never had an issue. Never had an issue. I, I maybe I'm just lucky, but I'm telling you right now, never had an issue with Microtech's customer service quality. Uh, I don't know, maybe. I don't want to say that it's necessary. Sorry, somebody at the door. No, thanks. Maybe uh, it's people, some people just don't like it. It goes back to the Kershaw 777 thing that they, people just got a bad taste in their mouth from Anthony Marfio. Maybe that's it. Maybe they just don't like it. I've seen videos and I've talked to his customer service folks. They all seem great. So. You know, it could be just a matter of personal opinion. But, like I said, it's an awesome knife. It might not be the knife you're looking for. It's definitely not, like, something that I would take and put in a collection and lock up in a safe. None of my knives are. I don't have any knives that are safe queens. I got a bunch of knives that sit in a drawer because this is, even as heavy as it is, is in my sweatpants pocket or in a pair of shorts when I'm in the yard. Because I, it's reliable. It's pretty much everything I need in a knife, and I can carry it every day. And it's not not too, not too much of the knife sticking out. Not too deep where I can't get a hold of it. You know, the only thing I can see is you know that that wore out pretty quick. Within several months, I had worn the the grip tape out. But actually, I think it makes it look a little bit more unique, and I can tell it's mine. And, I don't have to worry about it. No one else has one here. But, uh, yeah, like I said, all in all, great knife. Um, this is, I do most of my stuff on Instagram. I'm going to start and try and put some YouTube videos out here. So if you guys like my videos, please comment. Uh, I'm not a big YouTube guy. Uh, I have noticed that my customer base has tapered off now that uh, most of my friends are of age that they're retiring from the military. 
and are transferring out and I've, I've lost a lot of customers. So if, if you're interested in my sharpening service, I can, I can sharpen anything. And then, I mean, if you, I know it's a crappy iPhone camera quality, but I mean, we're, you know, we're talking pretty polished edge. Um, it just depends on what you want. I do have a fixtured system. I prefer to do everything freehand. Um, I, I can do a pretty good job freehand. I can get without fail, you know, uh, tree topping hair you know hair whittling tree topping hair tree topping sharp edges on on uh on flat stones so you know if, if you're interested in sharpening service i'm here in san diego california uh i most of the guys that send me knives know know their own process of getting them to me and they they pay round trip shipping uh or get a return label set up because they know my address so uh if you are interested just uh you know get a hold of me uh my email address will be in the comments when I when I upload this video. Uh, I I can usually you know I, I do work full time. I I try to I try to knock out a couple of knives for you know friends and things like that in the evenings. But if you send me a knife, I'll get it back to you as soon as I can. And if if you want it, if you want it taken apart and cleaned up, you know like uh, Apostle P says, you know you sharpen a knife, you get a lot of grit down in that pivot. I can do that. I'm not gonna do no any of the Jay Davis. Sabenza spa things where I take the washers out and polish that. That's that's I've got a Sabenza and it's I I wouldn't do it to my own, let alone to someone else's. So I mean he's confident in doing it. That's great. I just let it break in and wear in on its own. So I don't I don't do a lot of uh, spa services. If you have if you have tip I can do tip repair on knives. Uh, so I like to think it's pretty reasonable. Um, I usually charge you know for tip repair like ten bucks plus twenty bucks for sharpening. Uh, I don't charge any extra if you want it cleaned up. I will try. I would do have to charge from time to time if I'm gonna put finger choil in. If it's something you want, if you want a, like a sharpening choil, I'm sorry, add it in if it really doesn't need it. But uh, I can usually, if you are interested in sharpening, send me a uh, send me a, an email. Uh, like I said, I'm put my email in, and I usually base it by the type of blade, the kind of condition the blades in, whether I might have to do 